Good evening. I'd like to call the November 7th, 2019 Board of Education meeting to order. At this time, we have the invocation by Mr. Juan Kraft. If I can get my glasses together. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm um, going to share Veterans Day and Puppies for Sale and other inspirational tales since um, Monday is Veterans Day. <clears throat> On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, combatants signed the armistice ending World War I. Later, Congress selected the symbolic date of November 11th as Veterans Day to honor the men and women who have served in the nation's military. Since the Revolutionary War, over a million men and women have given their lives in military service. Another million and a half have been wounded. Significant sacrifices were also offered by Americans who became prisoners of war during major military engagements. Some were held by the enemy for years under the most brutal and demeaning conditions. They suffered mental, physical, and moral indignities beyond belief. The largest numbers came during the bloody Civil War, where more than 400,000 were taken prisoner by Union and Confederate forces. 56,000 died in captivity. During World War II, 120,000 Americans were taken captive. 12,000 died in prison camps, many of them in the Pacific. When the Korean police actions saw fewer prisoners, while the Korean police actions saw fewer prisoners, four out of every ten died in the barbarous North Korean camps. On Veterans Day, let us remember the millions of men and women who serve their nation in order to protect the freedom American citizens enjoy daily. Let us also prove our appreciation by honoring them with an equal commitment to country. We must take full advantage of our freedoms by doing the right thing. Treat others as we want to be treated. Be honest, trustworthy, helpful, courteous, kind, and reverent. In this way, Veterans Day becomes an annual commitment by the living to those who have gone before. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. At this time, I'd like to ask Wyatt Cooper and Tommy Russell to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. And if y'all would go to the podium and state your name right here, and state your name and your school and what grade you're in. Right there, uh-huh. Right here? Yes. Say it? Yes. Um, my name is Tommy Russell. My name is Wyatt Cooper. Okay, and what grade are you in? We're both in fifth grade. Fifth grade, okay. And what school do you attend? Central Elementary. Thank you very much. Good job, guys. Thank you. Our school spotlight tonight is Principal Carrie Chapel and staff and students of Central Elementary. Ask Ms. Chapel if she would step forward. Thank you, Superintendent Stefanik, Ms. Etheridge, and uh, members of the board. Uh, we appreciate you inviting us out tonight. I'm going to turn the podium over right quickly to our uh, media specialist, Ms. Jill Turner. She's a new hire to us at Central this year. Um, Ms. Grishak is also here to support students, so she told me she was not talking tonight. <laughs> and our students who are going to explain to you something that they have started the first nine weeks that we are really excited about. It has been a collaborative work between our media specialist and our other specialist teachers, including our guidance counselor and a project called Genius Hour. And I'm not going to say any more about it because they're going to tell you all about it and do a little demonstration, as you can see. It took forever, I'm sure, to get this set up, so. There we go. OK, perfect. All right, so thank you for allowing us to share about Genius Hour. Um, Genius Hour is 50 minutes. Every child is involved every Friday during our specials time. 
And as um, Ms. Chapel said, there are four groups and they're facilitated by our specialists um, in our building and our guidance counselor and myself. Um, and um, our goal is to teach critical thinking, creativity, and innovation through a combination of problem-based learning, design thinking, project-based learning, inquiry learning, and all the research models and methods um, that show up in Genes. So just to give you a little introduction on Genius Hour, this is the video we shared with our students, and this is a nice and capsule presentation. Genius Hour begins with a simple premise. Give your students 20% of their class time to learn what they want. They choose the content while also mastering the skills and hitting the academic standards. With Genius Hour, students own the entire journey. They choose the topics based upon their own geeky interests. It doesn't have to be a traditionally academic area. They might like fashion or food or sports or Legos or Minecraft or deep sea creatures. Students ask the questions and engage in their own research to find the answers. Along the way, they design their own plan of instruction. They decide on the resources and activities, and each student sets goals and engages in self-assessment. They work at their own pace and set their own deadlines. Students decide on the grouping. Some work alone, others work in pairs or in small groups. In the end, students figure out what they will make and how they will share it with the world. A word of caution, it's not a total free-for-all. The best Genius Hour projects have systems and structures that empower students to reach their full potential. Even so, there will be mistakes and you'll have to experiment. But in the end, students are empowered to be self-directed learners, engaging in creativity and critical thinking. In other words, they own the learning. We have set it up so that our students, Genius Hour Student Center, and it's directed and based as much as possible on our students' interests. Um, the students suggest areas that they want us, each of us, to facilitate, and then um, choose where they'll go for the next nine weeks. And then once in the larger group, they decide what they'll be interested in doing specifically within that group that they're part of. So we began to do some action research, and prior to Genius Hour, we asked our students if any of them knew anything about Genius Hour, and no one did. So we were um, right off the drawing board at zero. And at the end of nine weeks, we had 86 students respond to an exit survey that we did, um, second through fifth grade. It was a three-question survey. So we asked them to list three things that they liked about Gene Sauer, three, two things that they would change, and one thing they'd like to do next time. And, um, and then we uh, took their responses, we sat down as a team, and we broke them down. And they pretty much fell into 12 categories. Is pretty, 10 to 12 categories, pretty naturally. And we grouped those together and we came up with um, this pie chart. So it's a little hard for you to see the writing, but um, <coughs> the, they wrote the categories were the creative process, interpersonal, social, emotional kinds of responses. They liked being <coughs> together, they, had, they liked interacting with one another, they liked being with their friends, learning from others, robotics and coding, working with the team. Freedom of choice, active participation in game playing and hands-on tasks. And um, two students said they were absolutely inspired and one person said they loved the challenge. So um, the larger pies are the, the greater responses that fell into that category. <clears throat> so and here are some quotes that showed up in our survey that we just loved, that moved us and we wanted to share them with you. So one of our students said, I like Jane Sauer because we get to live the life here. Another, I love Gene, I like Genius Hour because it brought people, some people closer. I like Genius Hour because we learn more about the teachers. I like Genius Hour because you can use your imagination. I like Genius Hour because we are making kindness spread a little bit. I like Genius Hour because it makes me feel like myself. And I like Genius Hour. You have fun and your dreams become a real. We were um, astounded by their responses. 
Yeah, they were uh, amazing and their insight was incredible. So when we ran the Genius Hour, we did have a structure to it. We started out by having them identify what their interests were and then we went through four steps. And the four steps are planning, research, creating a prototype model or product and it depended on what their interests were. And then presenting their ideas um, to their world. Um, they shared them with their grade level teams and now we're sharing them with you. So our first group was a physical education group. And they uh, chose their groups. This is, this is just some pictures of them going through the process. We couldn't bring all our students to share with you. So we brought some photos instead. Um, this group, their goal was to create new games or um, research some uh, figures. <clears throat> so they set their goals and objectives. And they created some final projects, which um, Cody's going to share with his with you tonight. They also did a super job creating a poster explaining the process of things. Our second group was led by Ms. Robertson, and it was a kindness group. And in that group, they explored the topic of kindness and bullying. <coughs> they um, also went ahead and wrote some posters that they would be able to put up. Um, in the school and share with us on kindness and um, bullying, and then they went ahead and painted kindness rocks, which are finding homes around our community and our school community at least. And then when people find them, the goal is to then you know feel happy and then spread that kindness by sharing it with others. So these are some of their rocks. And then our third group, um, we have Buddy led in our lab. And she focused on advertising and public service announcements. And so this is our first one <laughs> we want to share with you. This is um, kind of a humorous uh, approach to Halloween. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Well, you can't really hear it, but what they did was um, they talked about ways you could be scared in Halloween. <laughs> Just creating an awareness of um, some of the things that uh, kids experience. So they did a super job, and this is with use of our green team. And then our second one, I think the volume is a little louder. This is about kindness. So um, the boys got together and they were descriptive about kindness and then they shared why it was important to be kind. And, and then the next one is, um, oh, I'll try this one. This is a little bit louder to start with. So. Hi, my name is Ari. Hi, my name is Alyssa. Hi, my name is <laughs> Alyssa. Hi, my name is Curtis. Hi, my name is Cassidy. And dogs go missing every day, and we at Century Elementary can help prevent that. Yeah, make sure they are in at night when you take them out. Put a leash on a dog so they are <laughs> That's a lot. So they're doing a public service announcement on the dogs. Yeah, make sure you walk your dogs and take care of them, not about them. So I'll stop them because it's a little thing. Uh, if you get a chance, if you'd like to listen to them, we can share. And then our last one, Seth is here to share about it. Um, let's see if it will play. If not, you can talk a little bit about it. So these two boys got together and they just did something that was very um, academic and educational about our community, which uh, and talked about agriculture. <laughs> Agriculture is the science and art of cultivating plants and livestock. Agriculture is similar to the civilization of the crops and the rearing of animals to provide food, wool, and other products. Agriculture was the key development in the rise of sanitary. Okay, so let me ask you some questions. So, what's your favorite thing about these hours? It's fertilizer that helps crops grow. The genius hour was I kind of got to think freely about it. 
hence why agriculture. The hardest when did you choose this topic? Because I live I live on a farm and I know about a lot of this and Charlie wanted to learn about it. So you were able to share your learning. And then our last, um, our last area was um, in the media center. We do robotics, plays, Legos, kind of use the resources that we had in there. And so this um, is just a compilation of some of their projects. Thank you. Do you make So they have tried and tried and tried to get this, and they kept persevering. So you know that we were talking in our slideshow about trying again. They tried and tried again. All right, great. Okay, tell us about the next one. This one's yours. Um, this is half a spaceship and half card with um, like a Yu-Gi-Oh card from my um, house. yeah house, and it's and it, when I started to build it and. My imagination just started to realize when I put this on, all of a sudden I just felt like, hey, this is half spaceship and half um, card for my things. I'm like, oh, what should I do with it? So I just started, so I found this piece so I can put it on the back. So I had to try my best and try to make a roof for it. So if anything like rains, fake rains, um, I try to make a roof for it. One of the strengths of doing this is our children all have a chance to present. And so all yeah. these presentations okay. Just, just so your so idea has evolved, it. has it not? Yeah, it changes as it goes on. Okay, so what's powering your car? Uh, zero. You've got to use the wheels and the wheels. Okay, wheels are important. Okay, and, and um, did you make it this way first time around? Oh, tell us about that story. That was a story. We made it a different way, and we put the spirit ball in it, and we tested it, and it didn't work, so we tried again, and then it didn't work, so we tried again, and then it didn't work. So now, are you going to work today? Work, and yeah. made it again, it didn't work, and then it said, well, it wasn't going to work today, and they said, Ooh. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this morning. Have some student demonstrations. So, who would like to go first? So, we want to. So, Cody is going to share his game. He was in um, Ms. G's uh, physical education. They went in the gym and did a great deal of research. He had a super project. His project was mentioned more than any other project in our surveys. They really liked the students, they really appreciated what he did and um, commented on it, and he did a super job presenting. Um, are you ready? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <You're awesome. laughs> Hi, my name is Cody, and I chose to do my genius hour of learning about football facts, and I like genius hour because people have their imagination for a while. And I started out with my genius hour project proposal. Then I went to my rough draft. And now I'm going to present my final draft. This is Saquon Barkley. Um, he's the best running back in the NFL. And he's really bad. And this is how I use track. He's the number one fullback in the NFL. And he plays my favorite team in San Francisco. Look down here, this is Cam Newton. This is him all the field is with him on. And he's the best scrambler in the league. And he loves talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the NFL combine. It depends if people are better or worse. Or what team they go to? Who's keeping that? I'll present my update. the poster. Afterwards, if you would like to try to 
built the course. That's robots, yeah. yeah. Son doesn't see that. They use them even in a kindergarten. That's neat. Or that's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys did great. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't want to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. And the two younger students. Um, 
that that were here earlier. Would you all like to come to the podium and state your name and uh, what grade you're in at Central? I think they're both sixth grade, fifth grade. Hi, my name is Seth Jackson. I'm in fifth grade and I'm from Central Elementary. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kobe Hayden, and I am in third grade, and I go to Central Elementary. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Good job. Very good. Job. I know something about I want to talk about. One of y'all had to uh, harvest or agricultural. That I might know. I might know a little bit about that. I could talk about that. That's on my level. <laughs> Seth's daddy is a farmer. Okay. Oh yeah. Was that your combine in that picture? No. <laughs> well, what were y'all talking about your harvest was? <laughs> what was your harvest? I saw harvest up there on your agricultural. Oh, it was just, it was just a photo we had decided to put up there. Uh-huh. I didn't know if you had a harvest you were discussing with your buddy. Where did you find the photo, Seth? Um, we, ser we, searched Google we searched it on Google Images. Uh, Google okay. Images? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Craddock's just learning about Google. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 can talk about, I can talk about the farming, though. Did y'all talk about any farming? Oh, my goodness. Did y'all talk about any farming with the agriculture project there? Um, yes, sir. Yeah. What do y'all grow? What do you grow on your farm? Um, we, we grow soybeans, um, wheat, corn. You used to grow cotton in Milo. Oh, wow. Wow, good job. Seth, what about the animals that you raised on your farm? And we we have um, some horses, a lone chicken. Oh. And, <laughs> and, we, um, and we show heifers at the livestock show in State Fair every year. That sounds fun. <clears throat> heifers. Heifers. Cows. Heifers. Cows. cows. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Thank you very much. Hey, you. Good job. job. My goodness. Oh, thank you, Principal Chapel and your staff and students. Y'all did an excellent job. I'd like to call Miss Jamie Miller to the podium in recognition of exceptional children's teacher teacher of excellence. Good evening. Good evening. It's nice to see you guys. Thanks for giving us your time tonight. I'm going to call up um, Mrs. Deidre Simmons, our pre-K coordinator, to help me give this award. So every fall, our Exceptional Children's Department gets to nominate one of our educators as the Educator of Excellence for our district, and that educator will be represented at the fall conference later this month. And our EC leadership team sat down and we had a really good discussion about all of the wonderful employees that we have in our department. And we were able to just unanimously kind of decide on this one employee. She goes above and beyond for her students. Her care and her love for her students is evident in everything that she does. She's compassionate. She's a team player. She will, she will just step in and fill in gaps and take on paperwork. And taking on paperwork in the EC world is a lot because there's a lot of paperwork. And she's just, she's just such a team player. So... Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Simmons because she gets to see her a little bit more in action than I do. We moved a class to Griggs two years ago. Um, and in that process, all preschool used to be in the same building at Central. Moving the classroom to Griggs gave this teacher the opportunity to shine. Um, she's such a natural leader, but she's also the child whisperer. That's what I call her. Mm -hmm. Any kid she meets, they end up laughing and having a good time and rolling around on the floor. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went outside to see them at the playground, and there she is in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> a kid that probably weighs 80 pounds <laughs> is laying on top of her, and he's giggling, and she's laughing, and it's really what preschool is about. Um, it's really about the experience, and she does a really, really good job. I can just say, can you just do this for me? And it's done. Sometimes, before I can even think it, she's got it, and she's already done it. And she just moves forward. She does a really, really good job, and we're really, really super proud of her. 
So Erica Phillips, if you will please come up. First time Mr. Stefanik met her, she was in the bathroom teaching potty training. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Phillips, much. for everything you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. <laughs> well, there's, I was going to say, there's a problem there. Uh, nice try. Nice. I would have been. I am challenged. I felt like that loud chicken that kid was talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm just on a heifer. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again. If anybody didn't, needs to leave at this time, because I know it's a late night, please feel free. Good night. Good night. Do I have a motion uh, that we approve the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can, can we uh, add uh, or at some point talk about uh, the mobile units? Somewhere, have an update, or um, when we do that, I know. just needed to be added to the consent. Agenda. Yeah, we can we talking? can add it. We can add it, but not not right now. Okay. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Agenda is approved. Public comment session. The public comment session is a time when an individual or a group can address the board about our schools. This is not a time to speak about issues or concerns involving identifiable personnel or students. Matters of this nature should be submitted in writing to the superintendent and your concerns will be addressed. Individuals or groups will be called in order in which they signed up and will be asked to limit their remarks to three minutes. Please state your name and your address. And we have one individual, Mr. Josh Potter, who has signed up for a public comment session. <clears throat> Mr. Potter. Good evening. Good evening. My name's Josh Potter. I live at 102 Hutton Court in Granny, North Carolina. This is my first time doing this. Bear with me. <laughs> um, what I'd like to bring forth to the board today is bus issues at Curry Tuck County Middle School. We are four months into the school year and we are having serious issues. We are having issues with children not being picked up. We are having issues on the bus, behavioral, vaping, um, carelessness uh, of drivers that have, has been witnessed. Um, I have gone and spoken to uh, Jessica Brick. I have been to the school. I have called the superintendent's office and asked for a phone call back and have not received one. So that is why I'm in front of y'all today. My child was not picked up by the bus Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. I had to drive from Grandy to Barco to take my kid to school. That's not a problem to me. Some it may be. I know some parents have to be at work early and they can't run back home to get their kid to school. Um, I know there is a bus driver shortage, but something has to be done something if if it's offering more money better benefits something but we have to act 
I can't sit around and see kids not going to school because the bus did not come. Um, I've made several suggestions to Ms. Brick um, on how to address certain issues. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to fall on deaf ears or not, but I suggest more monitors on buses, a permanent monitor, maybe, on every single middle school bus because that is the only schools that she says they're having issues with the buses. High schoolers, not a problem. Elementary school kids, golden. Middle schoolers, look out. Um, I've even suggested maybe putting off-duty deputies on the buses, as a deputy can do more to stifle and better control a child than you, me, anybody else in this room. Um, there's been issues of my daughter's bus was pulled over because students throwing stuff out of the window, um, hollering obscenities at folks, uh, and just downright unorderliness. Um, when I notified the school, asked the school about it and told them that the driver had been pulled over, they knew nothing of it. Um, I've also suggested maybe having undercover cars follow the problem buses um, because as I see it, riding the bus is a privilege, not a right. And if you can't be controlled, as I learned growing up, getting in trouble on the bus, they kick me off. Maybe that's what we need to start doing, toughening up because it's just a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Potter. Our student board member reports. I'd like to call on Sydney McDonald for a first report. Hey, friends. So tonight I'm going to start with Mayock Elementary. October 25th rounded out our best fall festival yet at Mayock Elementary School. From pony rides and hay rides to bouncy houses and face painting, there is a little something for everyone. Thank you to Miss Rose and Mrs. Kraft for coming to See it, see it in action. Earlier in the month, we had Smokey the Bear at Moyak Fire Department visit for Fire Prevention Week. And during Red Ribbon Week, the Curry Tuck County Sheriff Department came to share the dangers of drugs and alcohol. I'll now go on with Jarvisburg Elementary School. We had a busy month at Jarvisburg. At the beginning of October, we welcomed our new kindergarten teacher, Miss Kara Hart. In conjunction with JAG's Bingo Night, we hosted an open house for her classroom, which was attended very well. Thank you to Ms. Parker. We had a very successful book fair. Our teachers have been immersed in learning about Dreambox. We are appreciative and of the support of Kim Robertson and Dr. Lutz for bringing training directly to our schools. We celebrate Brush Driver Appreciation Week during the week of October 21st. Our students really love surprising their drivers with tokens of appreciation each day. On October 24th, Jarvisburg hosted its second annual Title I Trick-or-Treat Night. We had over 350 students and family members attend. Mrs. Libretto and the Reading Committee put a lot of hard work into making the night a success. Thank you to Mr. Stefanik for coming down and spending the evening with us. We ended the month with Red Ribbon Week activities, compliments of Mrs. Derby with a pre presentation to our 4th and 5th graders by the Sheriff's Department. We are thankful to the deputies Bray, Davison, Alcock, and K-9 Hunter for spending time with us. Lastly, we started off November with productive parent-teacher conferences and are all off to a great start of the second nine weeks. My last school for tonight will be Central Elementary School. An October recap had CES celebrating Red Ribbon Week with our guests from Curry Tuck Sheriff's Office, Family Bingo Night for our annual Halloween parade, and our first nine weeks PBIS dance party and pumpkin character contest in our media center. On November 5th, our students were visited by a taxidermist and learned about his trade, as well as many interesting facts about our wildlife around us. Our partnership with J.P. Knapp Early College High School students is well underway as we have student volunteers helping in our NC per K, pre, oh, NC pre-K, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> classes in the library and kindergarten and even in English language s students with translations to ensure success. We are looking to expand this program to students at CCHS as well. 
Looking ahead to November, we have our Veterans Day lunch and museum tomorrow. We also have a clap out for our Curry Tuck Storm team members at 1 o'clock as we support them at their state playoffs in Charlotte this weekend. Make up Picture Day on November 12th, a visit from the Museum of Albemarle to our K classes on the 22nd, and our first nine-week awards ceremony and Thanksgiving celebration lunch on November 26th. Please come visit us at CES, or better yet, volunteer to read or have lunch with one of our rising Eagle leaders. We appreciate all of the support we receive from our community and welcome you to CES. I'll now pass it on to Taylor. My first school for the evening is Sharbro Elementary. Sharbro students have been busy this month learning and engaging in new activities. Our K-2 through classes enjoyed a visit from Smokey the Bear during early October. Our teachers have been busy learning about Dreambox. These are two new data, well it's Istation and Dreambox. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the first one right, <laughs> but Istation and Dreambox. <laughs> um, these are two new data collection programs that will assist teachers in targeting needed skills. Parent-teacher conferences are well underway, and we are working towards getting 100% participation for conferences. Kindergarten students hosted Nursery Rhyme Day. This is where each student picked a favorite nursery rhyme, dressed up as the characters, and performed for parents and classmates. It was extremely cute. On October 17th, Shabra hosted Duke Tip AIG Night, where parents got to see cool things happening within our AIG department and learn about the Duke Tip, Duke Tip program. We ended the month of October with Red Ribbon Week, Activities, and Spirit Days. Thank you to the Sheriff's Department for coming out and talking with our students about being drug-free. This Friday, we are inviting all community members to our Veterans Day program. We will honor those who have served. Come out and join us Friday morning. Next, Griggs Elementary. Griggs teachers are busy meeting with parents for conferences. Makeup pictures will be on November 13th. Our first nine weeks awards will be on Friday, November 15th. K through two awards are at one and three through five will be at 145. Our three through five students will be taking their first check in this month. K through, K through three students and teachers are getting used to station. Our fifth grade students will be hosting a science fair on Monday, November 18th. We're looking forward to Thanksgiving and are grateful for our parents and community for all their support. And my last school for the evening is Knott's Island Elementary. It's been a busy and productive time at Knott's Island. We've recently had a visit from Smokey the Bear, held our fall festival, make that a record-breaking fall festival, celebrated Red Ribbon Week, held a bike rodeo, celebrated our awesome kids who are doing the right things with our first nine weeks PBIS celebration, recognized Miss Haskell and Miss Gibbs as our September and October Rock Star Teacher Awards, celebrated our Student of the Month kiddos, hosted our fall book fair, conference with our parent partners in education about their students, and we'll finish up the week with our first nine-week students awards. Phew, but more amazing is that all this is happening in addition to the best staff in Curry Tuck empowering our students to become the very best versions of themselves each and every day. Hashtag small school big learning, hashtag island knots. And now I will pass it on to Olivia. I will start with Curry Tuck County Middle School. Teachers completed P T parent teacher conferences last Friday. Our first dance of the school year, a masquerade dance, was a huge success for students. Sponsored by the PB PBIS committee, the dance also featured a haunted hallway. As part of Spirit Week, students donated canned goods for one of our local food pantries. Homerooms also participated in a door decorated decorating contest which focused on the theme of fall into kindness as part of Curtis County Middle School's anti-bullying campaign. Mrs. Stutler's homeroom was the big winner. They were treated to a they were treated to a cupcake decorating party earlier this week. Finally, student, students will be participating in a Veterans Day assembly this Friday. We will honor the winners of the VFW essay contest and send off the veterans cards that students made earlier in the month as part of our character education curriculum. I will then go on to Moyak Middle School. The first nine weeks ended in with parent teacher conferences and we celebrated our first PBIS event with the Bulldog Buck Store Wednesday through Friday of this week. Students used their bucks or earned for behavior and academics to purchase prizes donated from McDonald's, the Cinema Cafe, and the Currituck Chamber of Commerce, and other vendors. Students' agendas were distributed in late December and are already is increasing organization skills and home slash school communication. We are receiving praise for our Bright Ideas grant winning Operation Dog Whistle program, which uses social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Sunday shout out, 
weekly previews via Bright Star calls and our website, so no parent is surprised. We will receive the grant money in a ceremony in late November. We continue to utilize the Open Up Math and Lucy's Calkins Writerly Life programs. In addition, the school is admi administering the San Diego Quick Assessment, a reading level screener, to all students who did not achieve growth to identify independent teaching and frustration levels in reading. The SIT team agreed to create and support a school-based data team to analyze, interpret, and de disseminate data to their peers. They will begin with the ELA check-ins read and reading screening data, followed by the 8th grade science check-ins. Finally, our FBLA and FFA groups traveled to Washington, D.C. and the NC State Fair, respectively, and our in, in our 6th grade science classes enjoyed our re re Repticon reception with Paul and Andy from OBX Lizard Land on Halloween, learning about indigenous reptiles and the difference between venomous, non-venomous, and poisonous reptiles. And then my last school is Curta County High School. We are heartened to report that the newest chapter of the National English Honor Society now finds its home at Curta County High School. Some three dozen students were inducted to, into the night chapter in a ceremony on campus last evening. This is but one of many number of efforts to further promote scholastic success and the, and the public recognition of standout work at CCHS. Next week, we are pleased to launch our Talk It Up Tuesday events, where each member of the faculty and staff is asked to intentionally talk with at least two students about the college process from opportunities and scholarships to the college vernacular. We have also slated campus visits on Tuesday, November 12th from Virginia Commonwealth University and Tuesday, December 3rd from East Carolina University. We begin our annual student government holiday drive next week as we seek to assist those in need during the Thanksgiving and Christmas seasons. Collections begin November 13th and continue through December 13th. Following our powerful professional development on October 23rd, we will also be begin, we will also begin sharing a word of the day through Mr. Williver's morning news next week. In an effort to share good news with our broader community, all of our all of our school Twitter shoutouts are now directly linked to our CCHS website. These two social media outlets are also complemented by our school Facebook page. Playoffs are well underway, and with our defending 2A state championship volleyball team once again making it to the Sweet 16 in conclusion with, of another great campaign. Our soccer squad began state championship play at home last evening with a 2-0 victory versus Whiteville High and our girls' cross-country team will be heading to states in short order. Our football team has uh, has had a banner season now at 6-3 to, to three and appears poised to host a first-round playoff game at home next Friday evening, following this week's Marquet matchup versus First Flight. Tryouts for winter sports are also in full swing. Several of our teachers have been invited to present at the National Conference of National Teachers of English in Baltimore later this month. This prestigious honor has Valerie Person, Katie Page, and former CCHS high teacher Amy Hardy, now residing in Alabama, representing our school division among participants from across the nation. One thing I wanted to add about Crotech Middle School, I know we talked about it last time. Me and Ms. Paula Weeks are currently in discussion about getting the FBLA chapter at Crotech County Middle School. Wonderful. Good. All right. Thank you, Sydney, Taylor, and Olivia. Mr. Stefanik, would you like to um, tell us about the field trip request? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Etheridge. Uh, most of our uh, uh, trips are um, sports related, but not all of them. Um, since the last meeting, we had the tennis team go to regionals, um, cross-country team went to regionals, and we had the girls' uh, team uh, qualify for the state championships, uh, and we actually had a runner um, finish third uh, as an individual at the regionals, which is uh, pretty impressive uh, with hundreds of runners out there, uh, third places, nothing to sneeze at. Um, Oh, and so there it is, the next one, state cross-country uh, at Greensboro uh, that they qualified for. Uh, J.P. Knapp uh, uh, heading to the SAD conference uh, November 22nd to 24th. And in addition to the, the list, uh, paperwork is uh, heading my way for uh, uh, the CCHS land judging team uh, to go to Ash County High School in Jefferson, North Carolina on November 15th and 16th for a 
competition. Can I add a note to that? Yes. We have a member of that cross country team sitting on our board, Miss Sydney. That was the one cheering every time we mentioned it over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. okay. Congratulations. Congratulations, Sydney. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Concerning our consent agenda, we have a couple things that we'd like to discuss, but I need I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, and we need to discuss a couple things. I know Mr. Craddock wanted to to discuss the um, the mobile units. I'd like to discuss the mobile units. I didn't see on here any uh, further discussion about the landscaping contracts. Are we going to discuss that anyway? Is that can we can we do that with I mean, at this time, or do you want template. to do that? Should yeah, we yeah. should have been pulled out pulled. during the uh, approval of the agenda. Okay. Yeah, and we we don't have the the template finalized yet or a, a draft. Um, we're getting that. We're actually we shifted gears and we're starting to uh, uh, work on uh, uh, bid language for the mobile units. And so the landscaping is kind of on the back burner for a little bit till we get those up and running. Well, there was some language in there about spraying. And I wanted to touch on that. We can do that. Okay. Later. Okay. Yeah. I think what we we'd like and the to mobile and the mobile unit piece was going to be part of the discussion from the work session piece that I put into this meeting. Yes. I was just going to do that in the superintendent, con superintendent comments, comments if you want. Okay. Great. All right. I have a first. I have a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Consent agenda passes. Okay. Information items. Um, we are going to have to determine the date for the meeting for December. We had it tentatively scheduled for December 5th. Uh, we do have a conflict with that date, so Ms. Jones is going to look at the calendar and poll the board to determine a December date for our, for our upcoming meeting. And the same thing concerning our work session because we have our work session prior to our 6.30 meeting here at the courthouse. Board member comments and superintendent comments. I'll start, start with Dr. Dobney. Yes, I'd like to mention that I visited uh, Griggs Elementary the other day and walked through it and that had been my first walk through since I got better. So it was nice to get back into the schools. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who is a vet that works for us or who lives in the community and that. And in particular, I have a daughter that was in the Air Force for 17 years. So I appreciate the veterans and what service they do for our country. Uh, next, well, last, I have some homework and a test. And this is for Taylor. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, a heifer. <laughs> I, I grew up in a dairy farming community, so I know the answer to this. <laughs> Is a heifer a baby male cow, female cow, or both? That's your homework. Homework? <laughs> I know the answer now. Oh, if you, oh. I'm sorry, what did, Google oh, that. She had Mr. Craddock Google it. Kitchen every time. I told her what a heifer was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Female. Yep. <laughs> Good. Good you job. Have Mr. Craddock Google it. For <laughs> <you>. <laughs> All right, Ms. Kraft. Yes. Um, I visited all schools this month. Um, I was at Moyoc uh, Elementary School Fall Festival. I have to say, it was everywhere. It was the biggest festival I think they've ever had. It was really nice. I um, went to a couple of volleyball games at Moyoc Middle School and Currituck County High School. I went to the costume parade at Central Elementary. And I went to the drug program at Jarvisburg Elementary School for the fourth and fifth graders. And I'd like to say um, a big, huge thanks to Curry Tuck County Narcotics Division for presenting this program to all of our elementary schools during Red Ribbon Week. They did um, all six schools and actually went to um, Kerala to that um, charter school uh, all in four days, so that that was um, great. They did a great job, as they always do. And then they will be doing more intensive programs with our middle and high schools later on uh, in the year. So I was hoping that um, um, 
our de one of our deputies would be here and they could um, give them a shout out, but anyway. And I also attended the countywide professional development um, program at um, Curry Tuck County Middle School with Dr. Dickey. He was amazing. He was one of the best speakers that I've heard in a long time. And what was more important is um, the week after that and last week, I was in and out of several schools, and I saw many of our teachers and staff that were already implementing um, things that they had learned during that um, during that presentation. So um, I, I think it was money well spent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Well, I've been out and about as well and attended some fall festivals. And last night I had the opportunity to attend the induction ceremony at CCHS, the newly formed chapter of the National English Honor Society. And I was very proud of their, I believe, 36 inductees and one sitting on our Board of Education. Um, Curry Tuck Storm. We've got a lot of kids in our county that play on the Curry Tuck Storm football team. I believe there's three different age levels, and they're all going to the playoffs in Charlotte this weekend. So hats off to our students that play for the Storm team. Air Cross Country team is still competing. Am I right? So I wish them the best. Same with their men's soccer team. They're on to the second round of the playoffs, the state playoffs. Veterans Day is coming up November 11th, and be sure to take time to thank a veteran. I sure appreciate all of our veterans. And then we've got American Education Week coming up November 18th through the 22nd, which is a great time for us to celebrate public education and also to honor all those individuals who go above and beyond ensuring that every child receives a quality education. We thank all of our folks who work so hard. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Mr. Crowdick? Well, um, I, too, uh, visited uh, Knott's Island Elementary and also went to their fall festival. Um, I'd also like to wish everybody a happy uh, Veterans Day coming up on Monday. I'd like to um, uh, I'd like to uh, really thank everybody that's trying real hard with um, often some uh, limited resources, more times than not, and uh, putting in a lot of extra effort. Um, but also I'd like to ask that we still push forward and try to um, get some refined goals for the school system, not only on the board but in the community. I'd like to ask once again for the retreat slash work session. I'd like to fast track these mobile units at Moyak Elementary. And I'd like to, with the help of everyone, uh, have a trigger number that everybody's happy so that when these schools get to capacity, we have a plan that already is in action. Um, short of that, um, I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving, and God bless Curtis County. This month. All right, Superintendent Stefanik. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Uh, before I get to my uh, enrollment report, uh, they, they say you learn something new every day. Um, so Taylor learned about a heifer uh, today, so, so that was good. And uh, for all three um, uh, high school students, uh, the, the new program is called iStation. Uh, I know, I know, I, I know, I know. I know it's a small I in the beginning, and, and, and Mrs. Young could look like the letter is in front of, of station, but uh, it's I station. And it's our new uh, primary literacy um, assessment program, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's quite controversial uh, because uh, it replaced a long-standing program, and and there's actually a challenge at the state level about how the bid was uh, finalized, and so we're using a program that's kind of on a uh, uh, a, delayed, a delayed contract right now, but um, our teachers are going through training and, and implementing the, the program in all of our primary grades uh, right now. So, you see the, do you see the size of the type 
they look at when they read these reports? Yeah, on their phone. They probably couldn't. They, they probably couldn't tell a capital from a small letter. Yeah, but, their, but their eyes are a lot younger than yours, Doctor Dominic. So that's a fact. <laughs> that's it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, um, we had a work session uh, uh, item that we couldn't get to, and it was uh, enrollment update and then a facilities update. Um, and so uh, the board has a, a handout uh, uh, with the enrollment updates. Um, the second. The second month, uh, we did have some increase uh, in, in the district, but it was a, at a lot uh, more manageable pace than the first month. Uh, first month, we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, buildings that had double-digit increases in the first uh, month of school. Uh, in the second month of school, we had um, the highest increase was uh, of five students, but it just happened to be at our biggest elementary school, uh, so that doesn't help things uh, much. Uh, we need to slow down at uh, Moyak for just a little bit. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, all the other buildings were at uh, uh, zero, one, two, or three uh, new students. And so we had a grand total of, uh, I think when I added up with a couple of buildings going backwards uh, by a student, we ended up with 10 new students in the second month of school compared to 50-some um, uh, in the first month of school. So uh, we slowed down and, and got to a regular monthly pace uh, in November. Um, You're going to explain the point six eight in the funding formula? <laughs> Again, so the people will yes, uh, uh, for for the uh, folks uh, watching uh, uh, at home and uh, and the few left in the audience, uh, there's a target number that every school district has um, uh, to to monitor um, student population increase, and the state gives you a planning number uh, back in March, uh, and they estimate how many students you're going to have. Uh, if you end up with two um, percent or 100 students, uh, whichever comes first, uh, uh, higher than that planning number, you get additional state funding in that school year uh, to help fund the education for those extra students. If you don't get to the 2% or 100 students, the local government uh, has to take on the expenses of that education for those extra students for that year, and then the students are added into your funding total the next year. 2%. Um, uh, any math people over there, mental math. 2% uh, of 4,134 um, students is uh, 82.68 students. On our last report uh, at the end of the second month, we had an increase of 82 students. <laughs> so we are 0.68 of a student. So I don't know if that's two legs, an arm, and a shoulder, or uh, uh, what 0.68 of a student is, uh, but uh, that's how short we are of guaranteeing that we get uh, extra state money. Now I begin the battle of there's no such thing as a partial student and so that uh, if we got to the 82 number uh, we should uh, uh, get to the extra state funding. A uh, little asterisk on that uh, explanation. No extra state funding comes unless we have a signed budget. So um, if we get that through, as soon as we get the budget approved in, in Raleigh, then it will be something uh, like an extra bonus to the budget getting approved if we can uh, uh, get them to ignore that point six eight of a student. And how much additional will that mean for us locally? Um, in the vicinity of 500000 extra state dollars uh, coming in for education. So, um, million dollars. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're going to keep pushing that. Uh, I got some love from the, um, the deputy state superintendents on another issue um, about a week ago. So I'm at the regional level now. If I don't get the answers I want there, I'll go back to the same deputy superintendent and see if I can't uh, uh, get the, uh, the situation clarified. That would help um, us a lot. Yeah. Mobile units, um, if I could in my um, uh, my my comment time, uh, invite uh, Mr. Mullins to the, the podium and he can talk about uh, some of the work that he's done trying to get the mobile units uh, finalized. Uh, reached out to some of the uh, maintenance directors across the state to see what companies they had been using, uh, who they felt comfortable dealing with, uh, quality of the units got three more names for companies to get uh, some different floor plans that would work better in the location we're thinking about using them. Um, so I have three or four plans that I want to sit down and, and talk about before we move forward. Uh, trying to get some specifications that are a little bit more detailed than the ones that we received from the first company were kind of your bargain basement 
type of building materials. I want to make sure that if we're going to get these things, that we're going to we're going to buy them and keep them for a while that they last. So I've asked for some better specifications on building materials. And uh, right now, I'm pretty confident that there are three or four companies that will invite to the table uh, or will probably come to the table when we do the formal bid process. But um, not not getting very uh, getting very far with any more uh, preliminary budget numbers from other companies. They're they're tweaking their floor plans without sending me the numbers on their floor plans. I guess they're going to wait until that sealed bid comes in. But uh, I've been talking back and forth with a lot of different people trying to get things pinned down. Uh, talking to the health department to make sure that we can attach to the septic system. Uh, just trying to figure out what's going to fit where and how we're going to logistically get it all back there and, and make it work. Do you have a projected timeline, Matt, of what, how we're trying to get all of this done and, and what kind of time frame we're looking at? Or? Well, I mean, I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm juggling project management on greenhouse, bus garage, maintenance, transportation, and trying to get these mobile units taken care of as well. I know we have a timeline of the formal bid going out, uh, the, the, the formal bid proposal going out by Thanksgiving, but we need to get, I'm trying to get specifications on what we want to ask for mm -hmm. and the floor plans we want these people to bid on. I'm learning a lot. These mobile unit companies all go to the same manufacturer to get their, their, uh, their projects. Uh -huh. So we're going to go to three different companies and they're going to go to the same company and right. we're going to get different prices on, on the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, who's going to mark it up the right. most. Yeah. I, I have one I want to share with you. I'll, I'll talk with you after, but it's someone who builds off-frame modulars okay. and they used to build these for schools and they haven't done it in a year or two but would be very interested, so I was told. Yeah. See, see what the pricing looks like for that too. I'm, I'm open to anything. Okay, Matt. Uh, since mean, yeah. since you're checking with a few different companies, I guess that means that there's no mobile units on state contract. I looked. No. I know. I had one company share with me a co-op program that they deal with, where if you um, <laughs> if you <coughs> sign a document that says you join this co-op, they can give you better pricing without going through a formal bid process. And as soon as I received that email, I forwarded it to our, our law firm and said, okay, I've never heard of this. I've heard of it for other things, but not for mobile units. What do you think about it? Is it legal? Do you suggest it? Because if they're all coming from the same place and they give us right. a decent price for the same specs, why go through the headache? Right. So I'm waiting on an answer from our law firm on that one. Yeah. So they, they sent me a certificate. They sent me a form and said, if you do this, by state regulations, you don't have to go through the formal bid process, so why would you do that? And they do have one of the floor plans that I like the best for the location. Uh, the where, where we're locating them, they're going to be side by side, about 12 feet apart, and some of the plans are coming back with back doors and front doors, and we really can't use back doors because they'll interfere with the ramp for the front door on the one behind it. So I'm trying to get all front doors and maybe some end doors if we need more egress. So. There's a lot, lot more detail in it. Uh, they're, they're, they, they get down to the specificities of flooring materials, roofing materials, siding materials. What kind of, uh, do you want carpet? Do you want VCT? Do you want luxury vinyl tile? It, it's, it's overwhelming when you're trying to do all that mm -hmm. stuff and deal with other things too, but I'm getting all the details coming in and storing them all in a file to try to get it pinned down so we can either write the formal uh, bid process or or if the law firm says, yeah, this is legal, we'll go to the co-op and say, okay, how much is this one unit with these specs on it? Right. Okay. Save on the bid process. Right. Are we going to bid it three different ways, like for purchase, lease to purchase, and lease? Uh, I think At least two. we decided either purchase or lease to purchase only because the, I think the majority is thinking we need to keep these for a while. Okay. Now, with that being said, we, we had a conference call with the uh, um, attorney, uh, and used to be attorney that did a lot of work with uh, uh, Currituck, uh, Rod uh, Malone. And uh, we, we don't have to because of the price point, 
Uh, we don't have to go through a full formal bid process, but he said you go through a modified bid process and that usually um, creates the competition between businesses and you usually get a better price and a, and a better product. And so um, we're not uh, bound by you know, the timelines and the, the full sealed bids and, and things like that, but uh, we can actually uh, contact multiple companies and have them give us the prices uh, for what we're looking for and, and see who gives us the best deal. Okay. Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sh wait, excuse me, yeah. Mr. Mullen. So do we know when we, I, I appreciate what you're doing and you're talking about possibly putting it out for bid on sometime later this month. Thanksgiving. But we're working on. So when would, if we did that successfully, when would we likely end up with some units? Well, uh, that's, kind of up to you folks so to tell, tell me when, when I need to do it. I mean, I, I, we're, going, we're probably likely going after $250,000 that we don't really have right now. So, okay. I, and it's the decision of whether or not we need them now or we can dump them in there the first of the summer for next school year. With the bid process, we, we should be able to have all the bid processes done if we can get the posting out um, by Thanksgiving, we can have everything finished um, before Christmas break. And so then we can actually bring you a recommendation um, at the January meeting, yeah. and then we can put a timeline um, on, we, on getting them. It, it's best, even if we do do it in the spring or summer, it's best to pin the numbers huh? down right now. And everybody, every, every company I'm talking to says it's good to be proactive because typically they say when most people come to us, they, they, definitely needed, needed it yesterday, yesterday and, and then you'll, you'll get, get the best pricing. pricing. So, but that, like I said, that, that's... Well, you didn't tell them how many students we had, did you? <laughs> no, because... <laughs> because if they knew that, they know we needed it yesterday. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I appreciate it. I, I just like to see it sooner than later. I mean, we're way over capacity at that facility. Okay. So, that's my take on it. And are we going to take the information he gets, I guess, and take it over to the commissioners and see if they're going to help with the capital expense? Are we yes. waiting on that number? Are we going to give them a hypothetical number to kind of ballpark and see if we can get them on board? Or if if um, if Mac can lock down a, a ballpark for the the specs that you know a, a range uh, for the specs that we're looking for, um, we'll take that. Um, I've been asked uh, by uh, the county manager at the. Uh, uh, December commissioners meeting to um, come and present the budget that you just um, approved uh, and I'll present that to them if you didn't read it closely enough uh, not saying that you did or you didn't but um, what we had in there we had a hundred and sixty some thousand dollars um, in fund balance uh, being used in this budget that matches right up with a hundred and eighty thousand that I requested from the commissioners uh, for the three extra teachers that we needed for the extra students. So if we would get the commissioners to approve the $180,000 for the teachers, then in essence we wouldn't be using any um, fund balance uh, as of today, um, you know, uh, for um, our budget this year. Uh, and, uh, um, and so then this mobile unit piece is the capital outlay part of the request to the commissioners. So that's request number two. Okay. They've already received the teacher one, right. uh, and uh, and then this would be the second piece of that. Okay. I think uh, we're gonna have more questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll call and I appreciate again it. tomorrow, and then after I get right, I honestly to get a better product, I think that the original quote might be a little bit low based on the building materials I'm seeing. The first one I, that I brought to you was company that contacted me 10 times, I brought their specs to the table, and then when I started comparing apples to apples, there's no comparison zone. So they can all get the same product, it may cost us a little more to get something so less. And doing some reading in the, in the state building code, uh, these mobile units are projected when they, when they hit the school systems to stay 30 to 50 years. Oh, wow. We know, we, know we have some in 1974. <laughs> so I wanna make sure that whatever we get is here way below that's what I leave, you know. So anyway. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Stefanik? One other uh, sports note, um, and nobody knows this, so it's kind of like secret. <laughs> um, 
uh, if uh, if our football team um, wins tomorrow night and uh, they're currently in a three-way tie for first place in in their uh, conference. Um, so if all three teams um, uh, win tomorrow night and they remain um, tied, um, they've already had the um, the tiebreaker drawing. Uh, and uh, uh, when I saw the video of the drawing, they said, we're just going to pick a, a, a name out, and that'll be the first seed, and then the second seed, and the third seed. And when he pulled the first piece of paper out, it said, first seed, Currituck High School. Oh, okay. uh, so we won the tiebreaker, and so if we can uh, win tomorrow night, uh, we'll be the top seed coming out of our conference uh, for the the tournament draw. And then uh, likely uh, that would mean that uh, with a 7-3 and three record and and conference championship, uh, chances are we'd be able to host a football game, which would be neat. That's wonderful. Thank you. Most exciting news I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. Okay, a um, couple things. Homecoming. I was able to attend Currituck County High School's homecoming. What a wonderful evening. The weather was perfect. Everybody, the spirit, uh, the Team spirit was was wonderful. Great attendance uh, because of of you know winning season. Of course, that always helps. Uh, hats off to Dr. Matney and his staff for a wonderful job coordinating uh, homecoming. Central Elementary School's fall costume parade was a again another hit this year. I think that's one of my favorite events to attend. Just seeing all the kids enjoying dressing up in their costumes and parading around to the different music. Uh, that Principal Chapel has uh, going on that morning, and everybody's just just enjoying that that day. Um, in honor of those that have served, uh, we do recognize them Monday, Veterans Day, and uh, just thank them for their service. I hope everyone has a blessed Thanksgiving at the end of the month, the last Thursday of this month. I can't believe we're we're talking about Thanksgiving already. The, the time is just passing by. Uh, enjoy some family and friends' time with, with those that you love and give thanks for all of our many blessings that we have and uh, don't take anything for granted. And at this time, I'd like um, a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? M meeting adjourned. Thank you.